time for newspaper review. And quickly before I introduce my guest to you, let's find out what the newspapers are saying. So Daily Graphic says that Simbox fraud state loses 3 million Ghana cities monthly. IDD revenue reduces from 222 million Ghana cities to 56 million Ghana cities. And um, well, so based on the vetting of the um, you know, judges for the Supreme Court. So capping number of judges at Supreme Court, not needful. There's also been a conversation about the outfits that judges should wear, uh, with Justice Tokonu saying that she wouldn't even mind if our judges, uh, well, our lawyers actually begin to wear African prints, especially for the kind of weather that we have in the country as well. It has faced some criticism as well. Uh, but I don't know what you think about lawyers and their outfits and whether we should still stick to the traditional wig and, uh, you know, the gowns, or maybe we should consider something lighter for our weather as well. Now, this one says, Accreditation Board to audit private varsity lectures uh, qualifications. Now, let's move to the Ghanaian Times. It says, go back to the classroom. NLC, which is the National Labor Commission, orders and declares teacher strike illegal. But the teachers' union are still saying that they don't see how this is illegal if, you know, government does not consider the fact that they have not been paid for working for all those years as illegal as well. And so the strike still holds. Ghana must diversify economy to achieve balanced growth. And then also we have police grab two armed robbery gangs in Accra and in Sawam. Uh, Justice Getcher Tukonu says that don't cap appointments to Supreme Court. Now, Daily Guide says voters tip NPP over NDC according to the Afrobarometer. Now, this same Afrobarometer indicated that a lot of people are also confused as to who to vote for and whether they even want to vote in the 2020 elections. NDC held primaries for assembly members and ex-NCA chairman opens defense. Four Kanda shooters grabbed. And then the finder also says teachers strike illegal according to the Labor Commission. Uh, it has ordered them to call it off. Mineral haulers demand 70 million Ghana cities debt from Ghana Manganese Company. And industry players pick it to demand National Film Authority Board, Talos Troubles, shake investor trust, and raise prospect of sale. And now to my guests for today's discussion, uh, we have the um, executive director of the Dankwa Institute and also a member of the MPP communications team, Mr. Richard Ahiangba. Good morning. Right, good I morning. like the whole traditional look today. Yeah. Quite different from what I see you wearing most of the time. Yes. What are we celebrating today? Today is a special day and uh, I'm wearing uh, a gift from the Yana oh. Karim Muhammad II. Okay. Uh, this morning, I greet him very specially. Mm. And it's a special day for the Danko Institute. Yeah. And uh, he gave this to me when the Danko Institute he visited him last month. Awesome. And so today, I am celebrating him yeah. in our culture. How's your new job going? Well, it's going quite well, except we need to have you at the UPSA today. I don't know if you have plans to come. I hope I can make it. You should come. I hope I can you make come. it. Yeah. Yes, you should come. Anyway. Toward the end of the show, I will invite your viewers Definitely, to definitely. And also, we have Honorable uh, Alassane Suyini, and he is is the MP for Tamale North constituency. Good morning. Good morning. How are you well, doing as I'm well? Perfect, by his it, it looks like well. Mr. Richard I can't back beat you too is this time around. He's representing <laughs> your your <laughs> region, is he not? And, and I envy him. Yeah. You, you envy him, yeah, huh? Maybe there should be a day we should all agree and wear something similar. <laughs> but good morning. How are you as well? I'm terrific. I'm yeah. Good. I hope you are well. Oh, I'm fine. Thank and God. I Merry mean. Christmas to you. Merry Christmas in advance to mm. you as well. I wasn't feeling the Christmas at the beginning, but I think now I I'm think, getting yeah, there. I think it's just that the money is not in the system, but the feeling and the feeling. Is the money not in the system? The MPP will say the money is in the system. Well, I'm sure that is for the cameras. Yeah. Behind the scenes, they will admit that it's a very dry Christmas. There has been a conversation about corruption index and the fact that you know a lot of people are not sure who has been more corrupt when it comes to their parties in power so mm -hmm. when the NDC was in power there were lots of allegations against them now the MPP is in power and there are lots of allegations against them as well and so we're not sure if we should even be comparing in the first place but I'm sure Alaji uh, would say that he believes that the MPP is even more corrupt than the NDC absolutely I mean it's not about what I believe it's about the evidence that we all see you know uh, on the ground and and you see, in every country, you will have people who will be deviant. Mm. And so when you have a government, uh, some of those deviant people will find their way mm -hmm. into that government and may be tempted to uh, do one or two corrupt yeah. uh, deals. But it is always about the kind of leadership that you have, the, the determination of the leader to do something mm -hmm. about deviant behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, it was obvious in the past regime, the fact that you had the past regime investigating itself thoroughly, uh, mm. sanctioning people where the need uh, arose. You 
can argue that perhaps some of the sanctions were not uh, uh, deterrent enough, but yeah. you cannot disagree that there were uh, attempts to sanction people. Unlike what we have now, where the president is quick to clear everybody of any wrongdoing, reassign them, and really no convincing investigation is done. And when you speak about it, you are attacked. And that is why the Canadian High Commissioner, only yesterday, yeah. was complaining about you know, the levels of attacks against people of integrity who speak about corruption uh, these days. And PCRP Ofori, a member of the New Patriotic Party, former member of parliament uh, for Asekuma Adobin Brakwa, uh, also expressed in concern that it seems uh, President Akufuado has disappointed him badly in the mm -hmm. fight against corruption. So it's not about what I believe because I am in opposition. It is what the reality is today. And it is just sad. But there were some major allegations, I mean, the Emery deal and all of that against the NDC. And the MPP spoke vehemently against all those um, issues as well. And so I understand. But the point is that they have been given the mantle of government. And if those things were anything to go by, if they were not propaganda pieces, they, would have, they should have been investigating and sending people to jail. What mm. we know is that uh, the Emery deal that they criticized today, when they attempted to renegotiate it, uh, it had to, you know, lead to the embarrassment that we all saw the president uh, saying he was misled. Mm. Uh, it tells you that if they were in government under President Mahama, the kind of deal that the minority stopped in parliament, which led to the president saying he was misled, is the kind of deal they would have brought, even though they criticized the deal President Mahama brought. And up till today, in fact, the attorney general is on record to have said there was nothing wrong with that deal and they should not, you know, uh, touch it. Car power recently, the president went to... Uh, uh, you know, commission it with pomp and pageantry after they d tagged all of those deals as corrupt deals. So you tell me, I mean, what have they done to prove beyond the propaganda that some of the things that they said about the NDC were real? Mr. Richard Ahamba, has your president failed in dealing with corruption in the country as compared to ex-president John Dramani Mahama? I, I listened to you last week uh, where you spoke about how you didn't think he had done a great job as a president and so he didn't deserve another uh, chance in coming back. But people are also sort of saying that they're not sure about uh, the NPP and Anel Kufuado, especially because of corruption in the country. Has he done a great job at it? Well, uh, I was hoping that uh, my good brother here would tell us uh, the names of people in their government that they prosecuted for corruption. So I'll continue from there. Mm. Uh, but Abu Gapili. Uh, okay, very well. Uh, the fact that you found people in your administration and convicted them is evidence of corruption. Okay? Mm -hmm. It is not the same... I could uh, add what you mean. We prosecuted them. Fair enough. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making exactly to say that the fact that you found people corrupt in your administration and prosecute them is evidence that there, there was corruption in your government. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Now, the fact is not equal to the fact that you haven't prosecuted anybody because you have not found anybody guilty or culpable of corruption. Mm. We're clear about that. So, now on the balance of that, if you are talking about who is corrupt, then we know who is corrupt by evidence. All right. And, and so the is question is settled. So this one doesn't require too much discussion. Mm. We need to move on and see that how then do we build a country where people will not be corrupt, where when people are corrupt, there is a credible way of verifying if the allegations are just mere propaganda or mere mudslinging, which has happened from day one. How, did, how does somebody become corrupt hours after they, are, they have taken office? Mm -hmm. And so what has happened and what obtains now as evidence of corruption or uh, perception of corruption is a strategic communication position of a political party. And is that something the NPP has done? No, I'm talking about what is being, done, being done now okay. that creates a perception of corruption, mm. that a strategic position, a commitment to say we will pursue this agenda All right. on account of how we can become or we can be seen as credible, we would want to throw mud at these people. And that is what is happening. And we're saying that that is not equal to corruption. What is and it? the fact that I throw mud at you should not necessarily convict you because we live in a country of laws. Right. So the evidence does not exist to support that claim. 
So we are moving to a point where we need to do more. I want to engage in a conversation to say that. In this country, how do we solve corruption? Because if you move away from my honorable brother and maybe those in political office, you begin to wonder where does corruption obtain besides that? Mm -hmm. Because the few politicians or people in high places, or in high office, cannot be the only people who are corrupt. And we know corruption takes two. So we need to deal with corruption holistically. All right. Okay. And, and move away from this uh, campaign propaganda. Speaking state. of holistically, of, of course, there have been allegations. Mm -hmm. We are still waiting for, you know, um, details as to what really they found out during the investigation and what has been done. Well, PPA boss, NYA, we've had all these issues. And these were just a few months ago, you know, ago. We're still sitting here talking about corruption. We're saying we're looking for a way to get rid of corruption entirely in mm. our country. But how are we dealing with some of these issues to at least restore faith in Ghanaians? That yes, these people were accused. Mm -hmm. We have either cleared them or we have found them guilty. This is what we're doing about it. And we hope that moving forward, we won't have such cases in the country again. Absolutely. You know, and that's the reason we have, we have to have this constructive discussion on TV this morning. To say that as citizens, we are interested, we are pursuing this case. Government, the institutions that are engaged in doing this investigation, they must work hard. They must give us, uh, you know, reports. If they are not being expeditious enough, we follow the issue. And I think that that is uh, the stock and trade of journalism, that you pursue the issue long after the euphoria is gone, mm -hmm. when after everybody else ceases focusing on it, you are in the trenches trying to push that, to see that what has happened to this storyline. And that's what we expect. And that's why we're having this conversation. But it's never... Mm -hmm. The absence of evidence is not conclusive to say that the individual is corrupt because we live in a country where we must give everybody, by law, the benefit of the doubt. So let's do that. But you see, the conversation to say that the, the fact that nobody has been convicted equals to corruption is a fallacy, and that should not be entertained. We need to be in a position where we are pushing for evidence, and when that evidence happens, we can conclude that, yes, indeed, that is corruption, and we have evidence So we should let the people sit on the side. Why are we reassigning some of these people into other ministries as well, whilst we haven't gotten the evidence against them? If they are investigating, why are they still working for the government? Should they not be on the side? Well, that, that is a question that is beyond my pay grade. Mm -hmm. But the point of it is that if you look historically, that has happened. Uh, apparently, uh, the idea that the individual is not in the role in which the, uh, you know, the allegation they, arose, yeah. I think is sufficient enough for an investigation to carry on. You We're understand? waiting for the person to probably commit the same kind of mistake in another ministry. Is before it, we take action? Now, you see, that is a supposition that the individual is guilty just by the allegation. Mm -hmm. That is to say so. Mm -hmm. But it's not the case. We know that it's not the case. Just because somebody says, I am corrupt by their own devices, doesn't make me corrupt until and you know, after I am proven guilty by the evidence. So we shouldn't suppose that because it's uh, alleged to have been corrupt, it should be condemned and banished. Mm. Because otherwise, then we're truncating the system we have, which you know, afford everybody the benefit of the doubt in law. Okay. So let's do what is right, but by all means, let's ensure that institutions who are supposed to investigate are doing the job and are doing it well enough. And if they're not being expeditious enough, we the citizens, and I recall vividly the president asking all of us to be citizens. So it's our, our responsibility to engage. Now, the, the idea that some people are being castigated, I have not seen it. And I, any time when, if there is a corruption that I see, uh, uh, an allegation of it and the merit from where I look at is substantial, I would engage in the conversation of pushing for that individual to be brought to book. But does not mean that I condemn the individual just because I think there's an appearance of corruption? Okay. So we must allow the investigative uh, agencies to do their work and give us the fact, then we can conclude. I'll let Al Alaji speak on this and then we move on to the EC. You, citizens you, you, are not spectators, but you're saying that when, when we speak and act as citizens, then we are castigated. Then we are castigated. And that is why, you know, it is important that we just don't reduce this, this discussion to uh, the NPP NDC banter. In fact, mm. the, the High Commissioner of Canada is worried about those things. So you are urged to be a citizen, yet you, uh, like the joke uh, in Zimbabwe, that you have the freedom uh, of speech, but you but do not have freedom, freedom after. after speech. Yeah. <laughs> that is the kind of uh, environment that we live in today. But you see, I understand where uh, Richard is coming from. Uh, he comes from a party 
that is noted for not exposing corruption within. In fact, President Kufo, when he was president, indicated that he was not going to expose corruption in his government to uh, make it uh, crumble and that it will destroy his government. But I come from a tradition where we believe that the best way to deal with corruption in this country is first of all to expose the people. The embarrassment uh, is a deterrent and where possible, prosecute the people even if they are members of your political party. And that is what President Mahama was doing. So it's not surprising that you will have, you know, uh, the NPP come again under President Akufuado and you have no commitment whatsoever to punish people who uh, engage in corrupt acts and corrupt deals. It is not, you know, uh, I think a smart thing to suggest to the people of Ghana that there is no corruption under this regime. It's not a smart thing because the people have seen it all. They, they live with some of these people in their communities. They know who they were. They know how they are living. They know, you know, some of the deals that they have even done with some of them. So it's not a smart thing to uh, sit on uh, national TV and suggest that there's no corruption. Look, we all know what happened with Charles B.C. and the Galamse deal. We know what happened with BOSS. We know what happened at the PPA, like you cited. We know what happened at the Maritime Authority. We know what happened with PDS. We know what happened with National Youth Authority. We know what happened with the Ghana Cylinder and all of that. But what we do not know is how the president feels about these things because he doesn't even want to comment in some cases. And the few corruption allegations, the Kelvin GVG and others, where he has commented, he has rather, you know, touted or extol the virtues of the people who were involved, to the embarrassment of people who had so much hope in him when he was campaigning to be But eventually, president. I mean, when it comes to the Kelvy, um, you know, deal, mm -hmm. like, at least they came out and said that it was actually, there was no corrupt issue who said in that? there. Who said that? The mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that that is not the way to go. We have investigative bodies. We have investigative institutions. You remember the civil society organizations all complained about the handling of the Kelney GVG deal mm -hmm. and, and the handling of, uh, what do you call it, uh, BOSS, the investigations into all of these uh, deals. The civil society organizations and not just the NDC. And look, that is what has reflected in the Afrobarometer report. Where 83% of Ghanaians, according to that independent, you know, research, and historically, people know this, that the CDD tend or to lean towards the NPP more than to the NDC. So even if there's any bias, usually from the CDD, it will be in favor of the uh, 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 NPP. But this is Are they not the voice of the people? And so I if understand. you say that they tend to lean no, towards I'm the No, I'm saying NPP. that historically, okay. historically, mm. people know that the CDD always, seem to mm. have some, you know, kind yeah. of you know, uh, affinity towards the NPP. But it doesn't still take away the fact that this is an independent research that has been done, which has proven that majority of Ghanaians, 83% for that matter, believe that the president and his appointees are corrupt or engage in corruption. And again, about 15% of those who had confidence in him in 2017 no longer have confidence in him. Mm. And that is telling. That is something you cannot wish away with, with, with propaganda. So I think that we should, we, should, we should first of all understand, like I stated earlier, that in every country, in every country, there are people who will attempt to subvert the system, to corrupt you know, the system you know, one way or the other. But the difference is in the leadership that is provided. And so when you have the leader praising people, even though they are accused of corruption, clearing them whilst investigations are still ongoing, and doing nothing when, you know, uh, uh, evidence abounds, that when kind of doing leader... doing nothing, I mean, they're investigating. Is that not something? Well, they, in Charles B.C., what did he do? Maritime Authority, in fact, after the man was removed from Maritime Authority, he even attempted to uh, 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 offer him a higher position at the GRA. But for the vigilance of civil society organizations, he offered to appoint him at GRA. So that tells you that he, he doesn't see anything wrong with what's, what is happening around him. Maybe he doesn't have a clue, like I keep saying, that it's a, it's a clueless you know, leader. But if you have in the past where the president... Tell me what allegation came up under President Mahama that was not thoroughly investigated, in some cases put on live TV, 
So that is where I talk about exposing people and embarrassing them. It was also enough, you know, deterrent. And taking action. That's why I say you can fault President Mahama and the NDC for, you know, uh, 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 rich and not effort. So the effort was made, but you will say, okay, if monies were retrieved, the people should have been prosecuted. But at least monies were retrieved. Mm. That you can't fault him. And you can say if people were prosecuted, you expected them to be thrown into jail. Like maybe Wayomi was being prosecuted. You expected them to be grabbed and thrown into jail. That you can fault him. But then again, is that a, a, you know, a, 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 a fault that you can hold him responsible for? Because the court system had to run. Right. You can fault him for you know, uh, 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 not, doing in, not doing what you expected or not doing more, but you can't fault him for the effort That's to do something thing. about corruption. But in this case, what we have is a clearing agent at the Flagstaff House. Hmm. Okay. Oh, well, I, I see you writing in. Uh, no, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just uh, trying to take note for stories. All right. Because uh, I write these notes to myself sometimes because it's very interesting. Uh, my brother talks about tradition. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Eight years is not tradition. Okay. Okay to say that he comes from a tradition that exposes corruption. It's not. What is it then? What is tradition is that all two versions of NDC, NDC 1, NDC 2, have people convicted for corruption. That is a tradition that suggests that that party has corrupt people. Mm. You follow the logic? Yeah. Because he invoked former President Kufo, about him saying that, oh, I don't want to uh, persecute, uh, prosecute people in my government because it'll collapse it. What about eight years after President Kufo? Are they also worried about prosecuting his people because they'll, col uh, they'll collapse his government after he's left office? So this is not a serious conversation. We are talking about what is verifiable, what we can reference, who have been convicted, and they have been convicted. And that is the value of their tradition. So when we're talking corruption in this country, we know who we are referring to, the NDC. Only now, because they've now, been convicted. Because they have been convicted. <laughs> uh, why? Why do you call That's somebody, excuse me, why do you call somebody a thief? Logic. I'm using that advisedly, mm -hmm. okay? You call somebody a thief because the person has stolen something. Mm. You understand? All right. And there's unimpeachable evidence that he has. So you are trying to just say that because we have been they, the NDC, have been shown to be corrupt. They are just engaged in an enterprise to throw the same mud at people. So are you trying to say that just in case the NDC should come to power and they find some of your um, you know, government officials corrupt and convict them, that's the only point uh, where you would accept that there was corruption in your party as well? That is it's not what that's I'm saying. That's what I'm asking, yeah. That is, no, no, that's I'm exactly trying to say, I'm suggested. trying to explain to you what he said. Yeah. You understand? Okay. He's trying to say we are corrupt, but we are not we're exposing not it. Exposing, and I am yeah. saying that... If we are corrupt and we're not exposing it, we had eight years of President Kufo, which you thought that it was corrupt. You were in that, this country during the campaign against President Kufo. He was corrupt. He was corrupt. Mm. Isn't that what he said? Mm. So why did they, did they not find the corruption? Because we did not want to manipulate the judiciary like you did. You see? And the president. Okay. You, you, see, you see now? You see yes, what he's talking? We did not want to manipulate please, the judiciary. Please, hold on. Is you know the prosecutions oh, that senior, went senior. on. Hold on. You hold know on. the technicalities on which ah, people were okay, freed. It's not about the substance, senior, but the technical. Senior, are you saying that the judiciary <laughs> didn't do their jobs no, um, on their no. own, but you see, oh, had some influence let, let, let me finish. Exactly. Okay, let, let him this land. This is then. bullying. This exactly. is bullying. <laughs> <laughs> let him land and then he can come in. So we can wrap up on this and go. You know, you know the, on a serious note, he actually just exposed themselves again. Because if Ghanaians had confidence in you and voted you in power and expected that you fight corruption, and you are telling us, oh, judiciary and whatever. It's you are in control of the thing. What? You are in control of the judiciary. Please, hold on. You are the government. I understand that. Please, please, please. You are the government. But the government should not interfere. No, not to interfere. But you bring the case. We did. Mm -hmm. you, have, you bring the case. You advocate on, the, on, on behalf of Ghanaians. And courts, courts work in ways. If you go here, it doesn't work. You go to the next place. Is that not the case? Mm -hmm. Where else have they taken anything? The fact is there is nothing there to impeach. You understand? And that is the evidence to him. And they are trying to say that, oh, we, they, they are trying to do what I, I, he, he, I was trying to say earlier, that they are just trying to equalize, to say that, oh, let's find some corruption. Let's throw it down. Look, you know why you see that the NDC is just engaged in a conversation just to throw mud at the MPP now? 
you get to know that when you don't hear them talk about anything transformating, uh, transformative of this, uh, this economy, this country, there is no singular idea that on this platform, if we pause everything and say, okay, let's talk about ideas that NDC will bring about on this platform to say, this is what we dream for tomorrow. If you look at NDC 1, NDC 2, nothing like that runs through. But when you look at the MPP, there is a basis for us to have a conversation about how we think we can run this country. Let's have that conversation. That because conversation with them? We, yes, we Ghanaians. To say that we have a problem, don't we? We have a problem of under, uh, underdevelopment, we have a problem of unemployment, we have a problem of many things. How do you approach that problem? But what the is, NDC also on. asked Ghanaians to also contribute to their manifesto so they know what and what Ghanaians need. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that you as a political party and government, what ideas do you have on which account you are saying Ghanaians vote for me so I can solve your problem? Mm -hmm. And we're saying that they don't have any. So in this country, what we have done engaging the NDC mm, is always when we bring ideas, they bring debate. They bring argument, needless argument. And then when they have to, campaign for power, the MO, uh, the MO is always corruption, corruption, corruption. And I'm telling you this morning that the evidence is clear that from NDC 1, NDC 2, all they, con they talk about uh, corruption that you're having right now, when this era goes uh, over, this uh, Nanado Dango Gufado uh, uh, administration leaves in, uh, in 2024, 20, mm -hmm. oh, no. <laughs> 2024, 2025. You can't have four huh? more years of this. Oh, just hold on, hold on. <laughs> huh? 2025, mm -hmm. they will not have a single thing to say about corruption anymore about this because the way they did after President Kufo, they didn't find any singular person. That's the same thing that's going to happen, which proves to you, Bella, that the MPP is not evidentially corrupt. You don't think they'll find anything concerning the PDS deal? I mean, the PDS I am telling was, you, I'm we, telling you in this country, they talked even more than what they are talking now about corruption in President Kufo's administration. And they didn't find anything. And you and don't so think they they'll excuse, find anything excuse, in this current government? If they find it, we are interested, persecuted. That was the same thing. Given but why are them. you not doing that it's, then? But because there is not. There is no there evidence? Is, you have to get the evidence. <laughs> now, has anybody given you evidence that somebody is corrupt? It's different from you imagining things. Because there's a lot what? of things I can is, imagine. Is, is the PPA imagining bosses, things? Um, you know, interaction with the media personality not at least some incriminating evidence enough? What? You see, you just spoke incriminating. Mm -hmm. Is it incriminating? No. It's uh, provable in the sense that the person is corrupt? Until and unless that is proven, and which is why the, the, the issue is being investigated. But what I'm telling you about corruption, really, you just have to see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. The NDC has history of corruption in NDC 1 and NDC 2. They can argue anything they want, but I tell you, they cannot point to anything in the MPP, apart from mere allegations that the MPP is corrupt. There is no evidential basis to say so, because there is none. So are you throwing but a challenge say, to them to find evidence? Well, I'm not trying to challenge them, but I'm, t I'm showing them the evidence, the evidence of corruption in their, in their party. party. Okay. All right. Let's move away from this and talk about the EC and the introduction of the new biometric registration um, you know, uh, system. And they're saying that, I mean, the NDC yesterday, along with the other parties, were saying that they didn't have enough information about this new um, you know, biometric system before the demonstration yesterday. And so that's why they don't think it's even necessary because we can go ahead and upgrade the system that we're working with already instead of introducing a new system. So why are we introducing a new one then? Well, I think uh, we should have the EC talk to this. Um, the issues of election in this country is a very sensitive matter, mm. and especially to do with the register and things associated with it. Uh, so I think the EC should speak clearly to it, but I think they are doing their job. Mm. And uh, if they are doing their job and anybody has concerns about it, uh, they have mandate to do that job. If you have questions, can take it to court that maybe they are doing something contrary to what they are. Um, uh, permitted under law to do. But until then, walking away, I think, is the wrong move. This thing about uh, uh, non-engagement and then later on complaining, I don't think is productive. You stay, get what it is that has been done. If you find anything illegal about it, then take it to court. That's why we have a legal system, because it must function. It must address some shortfalls within the system. My brother said very eloquently that in every society, there are deviants. And if there are deviants, and then there are, uh, there's a perception that something is being done wrong, and you walk away, how do you ascertain 
if something really was wrong. Based on your perception, you walk away before the right thing was done. I have no idea why they would have walked away. So my feeling is that let's allow this issue to be addressed by the EC. And those who walked away shouldn't have walked away. If they have a feeling now that they regret the action they took, they should go back and verify okay. what they missed. All right, but why did you walk out? And why are you speaking against the introduction of the new system? First of all, I think that it is clear to any you know, close observer that having, you know, performed so poorly, demonstrating a lot of cluelessness and dishonesty, the President Akufuado regime is determined, determined to manipulate the elections of 2020. It started with the These are coup. some serious allegations yes, you're making. Yes, yes, well, this yes. Is and stock I can stand by them. I can stand by them. Allegation. You, know, you stand no, by them? Yes, you can go ahead and insult us. And ah, say but that. Who, is, who is insulting? No, He's I'm calling people that. clueless. <laughs> He's calling clueless I mean, and dishonest. And I'm just saying that you is, are doing allegations. I'm just, and I'm just speaking from your hymn book. If it quacks <laughs> like a duck and walks like a duck, it's we, a duck. We don't have a hymn book. Yes. We're not a You said, yeah, you said if the person is incompetent and you can demonstrate their incompetence, it's not an insult. It's just an adjective. But and why so would the if president the person want is to clueless, influence? if the person is clueless and the person is dishonest and you can demonstrate it, it's just an adjective. Okay. That's your hint. So, 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 so I was only right. using adjectives. Let me proceed. Right? So I was only using so, adjectives. So let me proceed. <laughs> but, but, you know, you see, if you say we are we are imagining the corruption in this country. You are saying the Australian High Commissioner is imagining it. The Canadian High Commissioner is imagining it. The CSOs who are all speaking about it are imagining it. The respondents in the Afrobarometer report are all imagining it. And that, for me, is insulting. But I'm saying the evidence of the cluelessness and dishonesty <laughs> is the reason why the regime is determined to manipulate the elections of uh, 2020. And that is why the coup against Charlotte Osai and others, you know, was, first of all, well, why do you call that a coup? Yeah, yeah. Really. Why would you call a coup? that a coup? How was Look, it a this coup? Is, this, this is, is very coup. interesting Look, this the morning. Coup, the, coup started, <laughs> the coup started when they were in opposition, oh, and yeah. it was executed beautifully and that is why look the american embassy had issue with how charlotte Osei was removed and it's on record it's a coup call it whatever it really? was a coup yeah. now it's quite a now, strong now, word yeah. now, that's why now, i'm asking why you're using it was that a coup word. and 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 Bella, look i can defend yeah. it anywhere it was coup. well they know about I'm, coups uh, yeah can they you know explain? About coups. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from a tradition of coups so maybe they know can you explain that further because i mean today you, you see you said quite a number of things against you know <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand because you see it's it's sometimes uncomfortable that's what the truth is supposed to do in some cases, especially when it is meant to correct a system. The truth is that everybody who is fair-minded and some people within the MPP even defended Charlotte Osei when, he came, when she came under that attack because at least their conscience couldn't allow you know... Which, uh, of, which of them defended her? Malik Kwekubakwe and others all defended Charlotte ah. Osei. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So they, they came. They, they came to her defense in in those days. So I'm saying that. Look, and and after Charlotte Osei was removed, tell me what procedure was used to appoint Jean Mensa, mm -hmm. which, which is different from Charlotte Osei. Charlotte Osei's crime was that she was appointed by President Mahama. Was that really her crime? That was a crime. You remember all the I, some of the things I can't even repeat on. On, on, on TV. They said about the reasons why President Mahama appointed her. And are you saying that... And then Nana Akufuado the appoints Jane Mensa, who is right. also a woman, very pretty, and a lawyer too. Very pretty. Yes. Okay. I mean, yes. What, what is this with yeah, a lawyer? I'm trying to understand. No, so I'm just you, saying that... Are you saying that her beauty is the oh reason why God. she was appointed? No, no. You see, I'm saying that, Bella, listen, I'm saying Charlotte Osei was pre pre appointed. And if you go and read some of the things the NPP said about the reasons... Why they appointed her. I said, I won't repeat those reasons because they are not palatable. Mm -hmm. Not even on TV. But I am saying that what is the difference between Charlotte Osei and Jane Mensah? Are you saying there's no difference? They are both lawyers. Mm -hmm. They are both pretty. Mm -hmm. And married. That's all? And both, and both presented... And both you know, appointed by president, one by John Mahama, the other they by got Nanado. appointed on merits. I know. I'm not questioning that. But I'm just saying that if you followed the discussions in the past, mm. 
you'll understand that the NDC is more responsible, that we are not having that same conversation now. Okay. The NDC is more responsible. But we see that there is an agenda to manipulate the system. And that is why the, the, the officers of not only the NDC, but of the other parties, had to walk out yesterday. Because a number of things have been happening. Look, even in the uh, aborted referendum, mm. you had one of the newly appointed commissioners campaigning for a yes. I mean, how can an impartial you know, judge behave in that manner? But he knows why he was appointed. You had one of the female appointees of uh, President Nana Akufuado organizing a party for female appointees. And that's and, wrong? And Charlotte, uh, what's the name? Jane Mensah attended that. But she's a female appointee. No. Once they appoint you as electoral commissioner, you are she's independent. Independent. Okay. You don't associate with any political party anymore. But you see, because, because, because... So now attending a party is wrong? No, I'm not... It was the top... But the party was called Female Appointees of President Akufuado. That's different from you having a party. And look, you can be a member of the NDC or a member of the MPP and have a party and invite, you know, Jane Mensah or the Electoral Commission boss. It's different. Okay. And when you target as a family party, a family of MPP appointees... They were celebrating women. Appointees... MPP women. They were not celebrating all women. Okay. They were celebrating MPP women. That all is right. what is wrong for her to attend. So I'm saying that, mm -hmm. and I'm just giving you some of the things that have happened that will make the, 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 the collaboration with the Electoral Commission sometimes difficult. And in the case of yesterday's meeting, we are told they were invited without giving the issues that they were going to discuss. Was that really only true? For they didn't them, get the agenda? Only for them to spring this biometric, you know, register discussion on them as a surprise. So your party when, was not aware at when, all yes, that this was going to be previous meetings, In previous meetings, they had commenced a discussion of, you know, doing a new register. Mm -hmm. Those discussions, according to our representatives, were inconclusive. So you are discussing whether there's a need to do a new register. You don't conclude whether there's a need to do a new register. And then you call a meeting to show us a software that will be used to do a new register. When we have not even gotten to a decision point of whether we all agree to do a new register. Why would they go ahead and introduce the new software exactly. if you did not agree? Exactly. Ask, so are that you is sure a, that, that some a, people in your no, party did is, not no. give their approval? No, it's not possible because we have regular representatives at the IPAC. And that is why it wasn't just the NDC that worked out, remember? Yeah. The other parties so the USDA, other parties, PCC, the other parties all. cannot all be wrong that there was an agreement earlier. We haven't agreed to do a register. So why bring us a software that will do a register to show to us, demonstrate to us how it will but be done? But the EC says that the current software cannot handle, um, you know, the, I mean, when we come to technology, we are far advanced. And so we needed a much modern technology to handle the elections and that's why there has been a need so there's a need for them to convince all parties that our current software that gave the mpp victory by the way in 2016 can no longer you know support the 2020 elections because it was introduced in 2011 it served its time. We're, in, we're heading into 2020. 2011. We must go with the. With well, the time, well, it, it, we? it does. It does not mean technology. Technology, new to technology is not always the best. New technology is not always the best. But this so, is more advanced, is it not? So that is why I'm saying convince all parties. Convince all parties. Then right. they get up and set up another uh, 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 body that is, you know, uh, in my view, useless. The advisory committee? The advisory committee. What, what for? Why is it useful? We already have the IPAC. The IPAC is already an advisory body made up of all pa political party representatives. Mm -hmm. What do you need religious leaders and others to be advising the electoral commission on what? Should they also not have a say in what's happening? Is that not why they have formed that? They party? already have representatives on IPAC. Some of those institutions already have institu representatives on IPAC. So right. what is the need to set up this body? And mind you, this was the same body that they o opposed. And some of the appointees on it, they are politically aligned. Some like of the who? people appoint, I don't want to get into the... No, but if you are saying they are politically aligned, we want to know who these people go are. Through so the list. All... Go through the list. Go through the list. You have you the can... list, don't you? I do, you but if you us? go through the list, you will find those who are politically aligned. If you know the, the political history of this country very well, you know the people who are politically aligned. So are you and, saying that and on what that their, advisory where their committee, alliances are. 
There's and, no and, one and on that see, team that in is... 2016, in 2016, mm -hmm. Charlotte Osai actually you mooted that idea. Yes, you will. You will. Okay. Charlotte Osai actually mooted that idea of forming such a body. They kicked at the insert. They said it was unnecessary. They said it was useless. Today, they are comfortable with it. That should tell you something. Okay. Let me, let me bring Mr. Richard Ahemba in because he says that, you know, the agenda was not given to them when the invitation was sent. And so mm -hmm. they never agreed to a new biometric register. And all of a sudden, you know, it's thrown in their faces and they don't see why. Because they think that your president has a hand in trying to manipulate the elections. Bella, uh, dealing with uh, my brother and the NDC is like being caught between a rock and a hard place. Mm. It's... It's an untenable situation for you. Mm -hmm. Whichever way you go, you are in trouble. If the register and the software and everything that was used to do the election in 2016 were just left in place, you know what they would say? Oh, they just kept it so they can do whatever it is they want to do with it. Why just like they... That? Yes, because why you would say, say so. Why, why, why would, would they say that? that? Huh? Why, why would they say, they say that? that? Because of what they are saying now about oh, the updates that has been done. They will tell you that, oh, that system is a cake. You need to look at new system. You need to look at this. They will say so. So really, if you are to do anything in this country, as far as the NDC is concerned, is unless it is from their notebook you are copying, it is not acceptable. You think that's what it that's is? That's the position they have taken. That's their MO. Okay? So it's because, not because we don't really need no, a new biometric? Because the NDC just want to be talking and be saying something. And I told you... But they are not the only ones speaking. The other parties are also speaking against it. Who, which are the other parties? The EP, the APC, UFP. They were all there. They all walked out yeah, and they see. all spoke against it. Please, please. I am telling you mm -hmm. eh, that the NDC doesn't have any other thing in this country to talk about. If he, <laughs> if he disagrees what I'm saying, he should prove us wrong on this platform that we want to talk about how to solve the problem of unemployment in this country so we can debate that. So that you and I will weigh the value or the relevance of their idea versus another idea to say that this is what will help the youth of this country. Let's do that debate. These other things, tangential things that the NDC tried to introduce, because what is happening, Bella, is that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. small, uh, small, 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 day by day, will get to a point where election 2020 will come. And the NDC will just have wasted all our time debating nothing. Just going around in circles talking about things that are needless, mm. okay? And would have wasted our time as opposed to having to have a constructive discussion. Well, our proposition is very simple. We, have a, we are a country that is developing. We have problems. We need solutions. What is your solution? Let's sit here today and talk about the solutions. So if you are walking away, maybe you have a solution that nobody accepted. What is their solution they, when they went into the room? Well, they said that we should upgrade the system instead of introducing a new system. Okay. Yes. So, so you sit in the meeting and press for that. And I tell you that when you go to meetings like this, they take minutes, don't they? Mm -hmm. The fact that you have ideas and perhaps that your idea is not taken, the, it, it will be recorded in the minute. And that is value. That is information that other people can refer to and say, ah, some time ago people talked about this. Why didn't we do it? Then tomorrow you can refer to it. We said they should do this and they failed. That's how you build a country. All because right. you have an idea to contribute. You stay at the table, talk about your idea. It doesn't mean your idea will be taken. But mm -hmm. you are there to say it. And in the end, everybody will weigh and see that, ah, after all, this person was making sense. NDC always continuously are being a disservice to this country because they are not interested in having the conversation we must have. We're talking today about uh, infrastructure and the things of it because they are not interested in dealing with the things. This is the conversation. I guarantee you, mm -hmm. until you, the media, begin to force the NDC, enough, like we've come here this morning, for yeah. example, mm -hmm. enough of all these uh, news sensational stuff. What is it you want to do in 2020? Ask that question and see if you get an answer out of them. What they want to do and what they have designed their plan to be is to continue to argue back and forth about nothing till we get to election. And they are counting their stars to say that perhaps they'll win. And I'm saying that we have gotten to a place as a country where we are no longer interested let, let me in having this rather back and forth debate. We want to talk about issues because we have problems. Bella, if you go to this country, and you see how people are suffering. And you see how is it that some people, especially the NDC, 
in the past eight years, former President John Dramani Mahama, have led this country and run us back, and we're trying to build it, and all we get is this back and forth. It well, is pathetic. The back and forth has it not yielded some positive re results, and I'm talking about the referendum in the first place, because majority of Ghanaians didn't even understand what the referendum was about mm -hmm. until the NDC and other CSO and religious bodies decided to speak against it. And that's how come a lot more Ghanaians got involved, tried to understand what it was, and made a decision as to whether they would want to vote yes or no. Eventually, the referendum was called back, mm -hmm. which was great. And so shouldn't, shouldn't we encourage them speaking and debating about some of these issues, just so that at least Ghanaians also get a bit more involved in some of these conversations? Or are you saying that you're going to be imposing everything on us and no, we have no, to accept no. I mean, if, if, you were, if you were in position, you talk about a referendum, I'll tell mm. you two classic reasons why, you understand, we need, at this point, need to be grateful to the president for recalling that. One, mm -hmm. when you want to have uh, a repeal of such an entrenched um, uh, clause yeah. in the Constitution, as the president described, you need consensus. Same thing for, um, you know, the introduction of the biometric. We need consensus, don't we? That's why they went there to have consensus, and they walked away. You can't get consensus when you're walking away from a meeting. They didn't agree with what was you, happening. It doesn't there. matter. It doesn't matter whether you agree or not. You stay in the meeting, because the only way you get consensus is when you stay till the meeting is over. Because it could be one minute that everybody says, ah, we've been talking all this while, but you've been making sense. That last minute, consensus will be reached. But if you walked away from the meeting, you cannot come back and tell us that you okay. didn't get consensus because you walked out of the meeting. question here is, yes. do we really need the biometric system, the new one? Can we not upgrade? Is that not cheaper? Please ask the EC. Well, the EC says that it's more expensive to upgrade than Fair to enough. introduce a, a, you know, a new biometric system. Bella, you, you run the program. You have producers every day. But mm. what happens now that we're on air comes from you. Yeah, but I want you as a Ghanaian, mm. first of all, to tell me, I mean, you are also going to be voting yeah. in 2020. Tell us, do we really need a new biometric register? I would defer to the EC because that's why we give them a job. They must do it. Okay. I cannot do their job. I can express my opinion. But you because, work in because government I'm as well. You should, be, you should know no, much I'm about these things. No, I'm not in government. I, I well, Dan Kwan Institute, yes, of course, we understand. <laughs> but of course, you are part of the communications team, so you are part of government. Uh, no, I work for the Dan Kwan Institute now. So I don't, you are not part of the communications no, no, team at no, all? No. Okay. No. So I speak so when I speak. History, are you here speaking, are you so your here history speaking, is wiped away. Are you here speaking for the Dunkwa Institute or for the I'm MPP? speaking for the Dunkwa Institute. So you're not representing no, the MPP? No, 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 I'm speaking for the Dunkwa Institute. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, madam. That's madam. And, that, and that, okay. that, is, that is the... Oh I listened goodness. to you on, on oh radio last week. Yeah. And you spoke for the MPP. You spoke against the NDC oh. and against President Mahama. So that's why I'm confused. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. But you see, you, no, don't, don't let me, uh, uh, Bella, don't let me establish a principle that will get you in trouble. Because okay. if I do, mm -hmm. anytime you speak anything in favor of NDC, I'll say you are NDC. Okay. You understand? No, that but is in not your a question. case. Mm -hmm. I, I speak for the Dankwa Institute. Okay. And the only time you see me align or say anything that is supportive of the, N, uh, the MPP and this government is when we agree in okay. principle what it is the government is doing. Because that is our affinity with them. So but you if see I see me, you campaigning for the MPP 2020, should I have a problem? Well, if you see me campaigning for MPP 2020, then you think you can understand or agree from there that I believe in the principle I'm campaigning for. And that principle is, how do we help the youth of this country? And if I believe that the vision of Nanado Danko Kufuado and the MPP can help us solve that problem, because that is an existential problem. If we cannot provide employment for our people, then I will be solving that problem by campaigning for the MPP. And that's the only time you see me do so, because okay. I believe that they have an idea that can help us solve that problem. I see. Anyway, Crystal is on standby. Let's read that's some messages, it. and then we'll come oh, now. What's up this and morning? Conclude. Good morning, TV3. The vice president and young man in your station is running their party down. You can see how Ghanaians are losing interest in their party. That's from Mohammed young from... Man. Oh, Which young man is he referring to here? <laughs> <laughs> when Martin Amidu was asked during his vetting concerning the corruption allegations leveled against Mahama, he said they were all perceptions. So how can I believe Mahama is corrupt? Declaring agents can never be compared to Mahama. That's from Osman Bukurisung in Tamale. Most politicians are corrupt. How much is their salary compared to what they own? Bella, just ask, just ask a politician to swear for not being corrupt. You will see the number of times they will murmur from Prophet in Pitwe. Um, good morning, TV3. Ask Richard who sends, uh, who, yeah, ask Richard who sent people who were not journalists to that country. Is that not evidence you rather you are rather being promoted? Good morning, TV3. Please, both the NDC and MPP governments have their own ways of stealing the 
uh, from the country, but one is somehow better because we cannot do away with corruption in this country because of the nature of our politics. New definition of corruption, what matters is uh, engaging yourself in corrupt activity. Once you are not caught, then there was no corruption. That's from Yao Menu in Offenso. Prince Henry Ikuforidia uh, says, Good morning, TV3. Whenever I hear corruption under this government, I ask myself the status of PDS, Amory, Bost, uh, NYA, Helny, GVG, Cash for Seat, Air, uh, and more. And more. Yeah. So, so simply put, Nana Ado is corruption and NPP government is the mother of all corruption in the history of Ghana. Hi, when they burn buildings, where, um, was the, where the evidence can be found before they leave power, how do you prosecute them? That's from Larry at Oyarifa. R Richard, I'm very excited about your stance on corruption today, but just wait and see. Uh, it's just a matter of time. God day. That's from Aram in Adenta News Sites. Good morning, TV3. The persons mandated to investigate corruption, in corrupt, corrupt individuals are themselves corrupt. How can they bring culprits to book since they are also corrupt? Ghanaians, are, Ghanaians as a people can stop corruption uh, if only we change our attitude. That's from Senor in Sogakofe. Mame from Tema says, Honorable, it's so unfair when people of your caliber misinform the masses. Why do you tag a gathering to celebrate women as an NPP party. Please let's try not to instigate the people with such talk as we all advocate for women rising to higher positions. Good morning to you, Bella. Honorable Sweeney is not being honest himself, yet he tags the president as, this, as a dishonest one. We were all in this country when the Charlotte Osei uh, dispute pe deputies. petition, yeah. des, dep pardon me, deputies pe petition her for um, removal over breach of public procurement act and many other reasons. Now Sweeney thinks uh, it was a coup by the NPP. I think Sweeney is being disingenuous and honest. That's from Haruna Mustafa from Nalerigu. That ends all, all right. Our thank for the you morning. so much. Thank you. And I like the final message uh, because then it brings back that whole issue concerning her deputies and how they all came out, um, you know, spoke against her and her regime and how she decided to rule the EC um, during her time as well. And so back to the issue of a coup against Charlotte <laughs> say, Does this not answer the question then to indicate that it really wasn't a coup? Well, you see, um, it was our late chairman, Kobna J, who said that there are so many ways of killing a cat. Mm -hmm. And I have told you here that the plot to remove Charlotte Osei didn't start with the petitions. Mm. It started during her appointment, when even some people went to court to challenge the president's capacity to appoint Charlotte Osei. Mm -hmm. It was challenging court. And then after that challenge was thrown out of court, the kinds of things that were said and the promises that were made by Kennedy Ajapong and other communicators of the MPP that there was no way Charlotte Osai was going to remain at post if they came into office. And so the plot started long before the petition. So the petition is just another way of killing the cat. Okay. That is the point I make about the coup. If that's the, the case, was just another way of killing the cat. Okay, if that's the see, case, they have before. Sorry to cut in. There have been um, some allegations against the NDC when the teachers went on strike. There was an issue where they said the NDC was behind this. Mm -hmm. uh, when the CSSPS happened, they said the NDC was behind it as right. well. There are different ways of killing the cat. Is that another way of trying to get the NPP to become, um, you know, unpopular so people would vote for the NDC? Could you say that? It has to be reasonable. Okay. And, for example. The CSSP, mm -hmm. when we handed over power, they changed all the stuff there. They changed the software. And then when it had a problem and people were at, you know, it Independence upgrade, Square. Was it not? Well, but even, it. so you can imagine the performance of the upgraded system, software. And okay. then they blame it on the NDC. And that is their stock in trade. That is why when teachers are on strike and our educational sector is at risk, you find the minister in the PRO comfortably blaming the NDC. Is the NDC not behind it? I mean, that's what I'm saying. It ought to be reasonable. That, uh, that kind of suggestion. I, 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 are you saying that the leadership of NAT, the leadership of NAGRAT, the leadership of concerned teachers, mm -hmm. the parents who gathered at the Independence Square are so daft that they can't think for themselves 
and it has to take the NDC to instigate them to take some of the actions that are taken. It's insulting. Are you it's, saying that the deputies that spoke against Charlotte or say couldn't have done so on their own accord and had to get some backing from the MPP? We know some of the, I mean, the, the, the lawyer for, uh, is it the lawyer? Uh, yes, the lawyer who sent the petition the first time. We, I mean, we know the, the, the backstories. Mm. You know, we know who they are. We know the backstory. So I'm saying that, I'm saying that, look, the plot against her was, it, you can see the trend. You can see the chronology of events. And, and, and when they say the NDC is behind teachers' strike and all that, tell me the trend, show me the chronology. It just doesn't add up. That's what I'm saying. It has to make sense. And I'm saying those allegations completely don't make sense. My brother sits here and he says that he wants a debate of ideas, a mm -hmm. debate that will uh, uh, solve problems. Will Look, we ever get you that? Have, you have been in office for three years, after you sold ideas that you were going to use to solve, you know, problems in this country. Tell me how you are solving sanitation problem in this country, for example, in the three years that you have been in office, even though you promised to make Accra the cleaner city. What concrete idea, you know, has been implemented in these three years to solve, you know, the problem of sanitation? Tell me the idea that, you know, you have brought, you know, to solve the problem of access to education for example free shs that is that is that yes Sanitation that is not the only solution that that is why today we have double track because the idea was not well thought through and that is why you will introduce double track <laughs> in the middle of free education because it is not a smart idea but i tell right. you what i tell you what today today you are able to recruit more nurses because hospitals were upgraded and you know expanded and you have provided jobs for some of the nurses in some of these hospitals. Right, Even right. though you are underutilizing these some of these hospitals, you are you have refused to open some of them. You have abandoned All some right. of them. You go to our ports today, due to the expansion that the NDC government did to that port. Today you are you are raking in so much well, revenue you that you are wasting. Well, yeah. You are raking in so uh, much time revenue is that you are wasting. Yeah. You go to these. Terminal I 3. <laughs> you go to Terminal 3 the time and, you are, and you are getting it, revenue. It is up, so we need to let Mr. Yes. Richard yes. and Yabba speak about as well ideas so we to can solve wrap problems. up. So, so, Director, just a few minutes yes, for yes, Mr. Richard yes. and Yabba as well so Bella, what everything my brother did is patronage 101. All right. uh, basic patronage, interposition, nullification. What is he talking about? We are in this country, been talking about how to keep this country, uh, country clean. Mm. The only time I have heard my brother talk about this is today. Because he's been busy all along practicing his propaganda argumentation. He's not been paying attention. Really? That is the point you can ask me today. Mm -hmm. That what have we done to solve sanitation problem? Because if nothing was done, this country, the way you left it, would have been engulfed in, in filth. Is so he's not been paying attention. Is it <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we I'm, I'm really not listen. I'm not yeah. engulfing yeah. I'm telling you a, a level of engulfment okay. that I'm talking about. The way they left it, if nothing was done, and that goes uh, to everything they left behind. He's talking uh, there about... Quick one, the sanitation ministry was declared the worst performing ministry. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so just to add to that. Worst performing ministry compared to what? Well, uh, compared to all the ministries. Yes. So that was the worst performing ministry because they hadn't tackled the sanitation problems in the country. Uh, you, like you, we expected. You hear, you hear me talking about um, a, a step that was taken to improve conditions. Mm. Okay? So if it is worse, it's not worse compared to the NDC. Oh my God! Should we continue to no. compare? What is it? Five minutes but, but, and we're okay. out of here. Okay, yeah. Pardon you me. See, Bella. Oh, okay, Bella. less. Bella. Please land so take, we go. Yeah, I'll, 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 let me set I'll everything else. Out of time. All right. No, right. Let me set everything else aside and deal with that question because it's come up a lot. Mm -hmm. Sanitation. The, the, no, the thing about comparing. Should we keep comparing? Yeah. If you don't compare, you don't know where you are going. You cannot find where you are going if you Can don't you know. Can you compare no. your achievements with you know your previous achievements? You benchmark. Your party. You benchmark. Uh -huh. So as for a party, we have benchmarked that we can never get so bad to be equal to the NDC. No, <laughs> so, but we want so, a situation so, where we will say that maybe in twenty no, no. in twenty sixteen we were worse. here. Twenty eighteen we are here. Yes. That's what that is we a want, conversation not? you can have with the uh, ministry. But I'm telling you that the all, CPI all, on corruption okay. says we are worse. Our, our, our time is up. Our time is up. We have to go. Says we are worse. They've, you know, they've been counting me down for a while. I've been speaking to Mr. Richard Ahiagba. He is the executive director of the Dankwa Institute.
And Honorable Alassane Suini is the MP for Tamale North constituency. Thank you so much. And this conversation about sanitation, I think when you come back, we'll talk about it. Of course, it. it's important. Yeah. It's very important. Uh, exactly. And the fact yeah. that we might be plunged into no, darkness this Christmas as well. Yeah. But you because Great Court is on track. Don't. Oh, I know. It's happening today. It's happening today at the UPSA. And we're talking about ideas that will change this country. 